Alright, so welcome to day one of week six. I can't believe it's been six weeks since I started this. And I still haven't edited week three. Yay! Um, Actually, it's like one thirty something right now. So it's technically day two, but whatever. It's day one because I said so. So what I did today was... I groceried and I did a bunch of work and my eyes look kind of strained because I was just working non-stop for three hours just now. And tomorrow I'm going to go back to Inlet 32 to do my work. And then after that, Inlet 42 to read, I think it's Lacan next and then Bart's. I forgot the last one. And then after that, art appreciation again. And then philosophy, because the, the, pro the protocol is due on Friday. And then I have midterms this weekend for NLIT 32. And oh, I'm so tired. Just to, kids kids don't do anything last minute you can can you see my eyes i'm exhausted i was out the whole day and like when i wasn't out i was studying and doing work i just have a difficult time condensing information when i did for the timeline and to my group mates, I'm sorry if it was half-assed. I have no idea why. It... I didn't have enough time. So don't be like me and don't cram timelines. I hate timelines. I hate PowerPoints. I don't like condensing information. I like lists, paragraphs, whatever. But I don't like having to fit so like a bunch of in essential information to just a few dots. A few, like... And then, another thing is, yeah, I have to drive my sister to the dentist tomorrow, but there's going to be a brownout here, 9am to 2pm, so probably won't have Wi-Fi. Uh, don't know how I'm going to do that. I'll probably, when I come back from walking the dogs, I'll either use that data for my work. Or save the whatever text I need to ahead of time, which is probably going to be the case. <sighs> so yeah, I'm just, this angle is weird, but like I'm just so tired, y'all. I even plucked my eyebrows and shaved my mustache early today, just so that I could accomplish everything. Eyelash. I didn't even get to freaking do my nails properly. Now they look gross. They're not shaped. They're not cut. And I don't enjoy having nails even as long as this because I can't play. I can't play guitar or bass. It's so it's so distracting and like it's so annoying because when I erased the back nail polish, it went underneath. So now it looks like there's dirt, but it's not dirty. Yeah. Welcome to day one. See you tomorrow. Hey y'all, so I'm outside for once. <laughs> I dropped my sister off at the dentist. It's currently day two, week six. And I'm at Coffee Bean. I ordered a drink. And I'm studying right now and I'm waiting for it. Um, Coffee Bean, if you see this, sponsor me. Um, so yeah, I'm about to read a few files from N32 about romanticism. I'm actually really excited, off to a really good start. The first quote that I love about this, literally the first line. Bliss was it in that dawn to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. William Wordsworth alludes here to his experience at the age of 17 of the French Revolution. This is from Romanticism, by the way. Masterpieces of the 19th century, varieties of romanticism. 
I think this is from Northern Anthology, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, that's basically all. So I hope that I can at least finish this one because it's just five pages. And the next one, because the third one is 71 pages, so I definitely won't be able to finish that within like an hour. And yeah, I'm waiting for my drink. And I feel kind of guilty because I don't like spending a lot of money because I literally just had breakfast at like 2 plus because the brownout was 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So I slept for three hours because my body was so warm and hungry. So yeah. So now I'm here and it's freaking hilarious. But I'm gonna go get my drink now. I'll be back. Yo, I'm laughing so hard because Emperor's New Clothes is playing. So, um, filled by ramen. I dare you to copyright me. <laughs> I, I got my drink and I'm hopelessly tearing away at this straw wrapper. I feel so bad at it for my metal straw. But here it is, double chocolate regular, my favorite drink. In case you're wondering. So, I just hope. I hope that I can. It's so good, oh my god. I remember the first time I tried this, I was in the 10th grade. And I. It was in the, the coffee bean at Evenue. And I wanted to cry because it was just so simple but so good. And they changed their whipped cream too. I think it's like this sweet marshmallow thing now. But, anyways, yeah. I need to get to reading now, so I'm gonna say goodbye, but I'll update you later because I just want to get stuff done because I took a three hour nap a while ago and I feel full, so it feels weird drinking this, but I need to buy something to stay here and I don't want anything else, so yeah, bye. Forgive me for the crappy exposure from like the side of my face, but currently reading romanticism as I was yesterday at Coffee Bean because I didn't get to finish it because I had to pick up my sister and after this I'll probably read like The Sorrows of Young I just plan on doing everything in the 32 today our midterms were moved to next week so that's good but I really need to get to work on my art appreciation philosophy and go back to my literary text in, in the 42 and that's my update. I'm also going to share with you a quote that I really like from, what is this, page, does not have a page, cool, oh, 422, Varieties of Romanticism from Northern Anthology. It says here, Imagination derived from the soul, the aspect of human being that links the human with the eternal. Through it, men and women can transcend earthly limitations can express high aspiration, can escape, and help one another escape the dreariness of mortality without necessarily positing a life beyond the present one. And if that ain't me every day during this pandemic, or normal life for that matter. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with y'all and I feel so bad because I wasn't able to edit week three yet, which I'll try to get to today but i'm really working around a tight schedule because our levinas pro group protocol is due on friday and we can't even move it because that would shorten the time of the next one so but yeah let's give me a quick update for day three of week six i'm sorry i didn't make that clear in the beginning it's day three of week six but yeah i might see you later i might not I hope I get to finish all of this. Hello, it is day four, week six, and I am about to put a pin in August 18. Actually, I'm done with August 18 of the Sorrows of Young Verte. I'm gonna forgive me for pronouncing it like that, but I heard a I heard the School of Life. This uh pronounce it so i'm not i'm not gonna say verter because it just sounds lame so i'm gonna always say verter and goethe to, to refer to goethe to goethe you know 
But yeah, um, all I can say is that, holy crap, my face after reading August 18 is like, it felt like I went through, it felt through like a, the amount of material in just one part felt like three years but it was so good but holy crap it's so romantic i mean that's the point reading romanticism but like holy crap what like let me just read you like one line okay here there is not a single moment that does not consume you and those around you who are close to you not a moment in which you are not must be a destroyer. The most harmless walk costs a thousand poor worms their lives. A footstep shatters the toilsome edifices of the ants and stamps a small world into a shameful grave. Like... So it just makes you think, you know. Um, Hani, sponsor me. I'm gonna go walk my dogs now. See y'all later tomorrow. Still haven't edited week three. Oh yeah, I need to work on philosophy tonight because it's due tomorrow night and I'm in a group and the whole timeline is still messed up because of like Sir forgetting to upload the rest of the module that one time so I haven't even read the text so let wish me luck Day 5, week 6, what is up? I just came back from walking the dogs, I'm about to have dinner, I hit myself in the face and I'm done editing week 3 Finally, I'll probably post it tomorrow though because I need good lighting for a thumbnail that's gonna catch y'all's eyes. And um, I want Shake Shack now because Bambi's watching a Try Guys video about Shake Shack. And I just remember that one time when they gave us a bunch of free stuff because my mom thought that she left her pants there. Huh? Sorry about that. Anyways, I was able to do my protocol thing today, although, you know. I didn't input my paragraph only because it would be contradictory to the rest of what my groupmates were saying so I edited proofread and like, you know, corrected some parts to make it sound better and more coherent. So anyways, I hope that it's about Levinas by the way and I'm so sad because I really want to read his text and I will absorb it some other time probably. Um, well, I technically have no summer for the next few freaking years but maybe holy week because it's only 22 pages but I'm so excited to read it and other texts as well like I'm literally making my own copy and saving it in my google drive so that you know when sir like removes our access I'm gonna have the opportunity to read it in my own time because I really want to read it anyways I'm done with that today hopefully I'll get a decent grade because the last time I got a B and it's, I think it's because we were contradictory we're contradicting each other's statements so this time I purposely chose to leave mine out so it <sighs> could contradict because I honestly do not believe that love is possible without self-abnegation I think that's, that just comes with it and to assume that love is possible without self-abnegation of any kind is naive and over romanticization of an idea of love projected onto us by like media and whatever anyways i'm hungry as heck i'm gonna go grab dinner and by grab dinner i mean eat vega meat free nuggets sponsor me and my mushroom dumplings so yeah, I'll post this thing tomorrow. Hopefully I can finish my Verter reading and module tonight. So that tomorrow I can focus on our appreciation. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. Good night. I just finished The Sorrows of Young Verter and... Oh, I'm not gonna spoil it. It was a lot. That was a lot to take in. Like these knee socks but yeah um read it for yourself if you wanna know why I'm like this I need to feed the dogs um wow that was depressing
That's all I'm gonna say. I loved it though. Hello, it's Sunday, and I'm gonna pass out. It's day seven of week six. I just finished my art appreciation module, and I'm about I'm, I'm starting the next one just a little bit, and then I'm gonna read a few pages of my Lacan reading because I need to read three three all three of the inlet 42 text by tomorrow to answer something so now my quotes of the week and i have a couple okay so bear with me because i mean they're not that long so hear me out here this one is from romanticism from the northern anthology okay <clears throat> The revolutionary further, ferv, fervor of the late 18th century had generated a vision of infinite human possibility, political and personal. The escapist implications of increasing emphasis on nature, the primitive, the uncomplicated past, suggest, however, a sense of alienation. Now, if that isn't how we look at the past now, like looking back on like photos from like what a year ago few years ago isn't everyone just like basically escapist now like but also all alone at the same time while romanticizing the past here's f f life lessons from Werther I forgot who wrote this but it's called life lessons from Werther Werther yet Far from, an en from ennobling its hero, Werther is actually a warning against Goethe sees as a consuming what Goethe sees as a consuming spiritual disease. What kills Werther is not disappointed love but toxic self-centeredness, subjectivity run wild. Whether he is enjoying the sublimity of a landscape or the com company of Charlotte, Werther is always really only involved with himself, his own ideas and emotions. The rich and ardent feeling which filled my heart with the love of nature, overwhelmed me with a torrent of delight, and brought all paradise before me, has now become an insupportable torment, a demon, demon which perpetually pursues me, he writes. The fatal complication of his illness is pride. Werther is not just miserable, but proud of his misery, which he takes as proof that he is exceptionally sensitive, finer than the world that disappoints him. Having identified himself with the universe. He finds that when he is unhappy, the universe becomes a prison. It's so sad. And here, a little bit more. The last sentence. Goethe's last words were, more light, probably his vision, was dimming, and he just wanted someone to open a window. But it is also Goethe's last perfect metaphor. One final plea for illumination from a writer who had spent all his life seeking it. That's so beautiful, oh my god. Oh yeah, the author is Adam Kirsch. This is from February 1, 2016. Okay, now this is from the Young Sorrows of... The Sorrows of Young Werther. This is some quotes from it. That is quite different, Albert replied, because a person who whose passion carries him away loses all his powers of thought and is regarded as drunk, as insane. Oh, you reasonable people, I cried, smiling. Passion, drunkenness, madness. You stand there so calmly, so uninvolved, you moral people. You scold the drinker, loathe the weak-minded, pass by like the priest, <laughs> and thank God like the Pharisees, and he has not made you as one of these. I have been drunk more than once. My passions were never far from madness, and I don't regret either. For despite my limitations, I have learned to understand how all exceptional people who created something great, something that seemed impossible, have from the time immemorial been vilified as drunks and madmen. And that's Werther who says that, of course. And a few more from my philosophy class. This was from my teacher, okay, from my module. There's a different kind of emptiness. 
in a space that has been vacated, vacated, and one that has yet to be occupied. A new house is empty of history and full of potentiality. A vacated, a vacated home is full of ghosts. The pantry is present in its emptiness as a place that was always full of parental provision. So basically, I think Sir is talking about um, because this this module is about Levinas and how it's. Di Sorry about that. I ran out of memory, but as I was saying, Levinas is trying to say that the nothingness that inhabits inhabits is that the right the right term a, pl a, pl a space when there was something there and there was never anything to begin with is different so let's say this right before there were scissors in my hand you just see my hand you say there's nothing in your hand because you think there's nothing in your hand when I put this here you say there are scissors in your hand so you think of that when it's gone you say there's nothing in your hand again but now it's replaced with the image that there were once scissors there okay that's like a, a really bad example but that's kind of the point. It's it's different, and that's why that quote stood out to me. So, yeah. Okay, a few more. In suffering and death, we come into contact with what is intransitive about ourselves. Every attribute we have sh we have is shared in, to greater and lesser degree by others. You might be faster or younger or prettier than I am, but we are all somewhat fast, somewhat young, somewhat pretty, in relation to something. What we are, though, our existence is completely intransitive. You cannot be me, and I am not you. What is unique about you is your being. Everyone exists, but no one can be you. It speaks for itself. Okay. I think this is my last one. Here. The whole acuity of suffering lies in the impossibility of retreat. It is the fact of being backed up against life and being. In the sense, suffering is the impossibility of nothingness. I'm just gonna leave that to you. This is by Levinas, by the way. So just think about that. Day five. Oops. Sorry, I'm on Google Photos. So yeah, that was my last quote. And my tip of the week is get enough sleep, please. And try to be consistent. Even if you sleep late, as long as you sleep enough and you sleep at that time consistently, you're golden. So yeah also four hours is not good at least six come on so yeah um i'll see you tomorrow for week seven i mean it's like 12 24 a.m so it's technically already tomorrow but yeah <laughs> hopefully i'll regain my balance it'll be a new week tomorrow a new academic week also, it's midterms week for NLA32, yikes. So, yeah.